DIYs by Dar. I have some antique chairs that are mismatched and ugly. Perfect for the Ugly Duckling Challenge with the theme, Make It Sparkle, with gold, glitter, or gloss. And this is being hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. Check out the playlist in my description and see what all of us talented artists have come up with for this challenge. These chairs I picked up from the Goodwill and they looked great to me. They looked very well matched and easy to make a bench out of. But when I got them home, one of these things is not like the other. This one is shorter, so I'm going to have to take and cut the bottoms off to make them the same length to see if I can even put these chairs together as a bench. <clears throat> They're quite old. They had new bottoms put on them a few times. So, let's get at it. Okay. I think I've gotten down to the last layer on the chair and I'm going to count. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, six different coverings on this chair and they must be extremely old and someone must have really loved these chairs because these are Montgomery straps with some uh, burlap and there's two layers to hold the bottom of this seat. So if anybody can tell me how old that takes this chair back to, that would be really great. But that's the only part uh, left that I have to do. There was a bunch of pins in it. I had to be extremely careful because I did not want to get jabbed by a pin. Okay. Let's see, what does it say on this? The Colonial Salt Company, Akron, Ohio. So this was an old salt bag. The, the, the last layer of material on here just was, you probably could have blown on it and it would have fell off. It was pretty fragile. All right, so when I get these all off, I'll come back and I'll show you what the base of these two chairs look like. Okay. Did it to myself again. Mismatched chairs. So I carefully measured up where they needed to be trimmed to, to hopefully give me a level bench. So here we go. Well, here we are. I have the chairs together. Um, sorry, I didn't get that recorded. I got a little carried away, got into it and never hit record, but what I did was I had an old broomstick that uh, we were going to throw away and it was the perfect size. So I just cut that and put it in on each side with a screw and that was a lot of fun to make sure I didn't get that wood split. So then here we go on the front, I did the same thing, screwed it in, and I used leftover wood, and good, we're straight, off to a good start so far. I wanted to put some spacers on top of those top rails just to help that board from flexing. Not so much that the board was going to help um, with the weight of that other than dispersing it just that that top board would be secured to those but 
To get to that point, I wanted them secured to get them all on straight. So I used some wood glue and I did glue them into place first and left them for 24 hours. And I was quite surprised at how sturdy they were with just that little bit of glue on there. The main point of contact was going to be in the front, down the forefront uh, legs. And I had to go very carefully because I did not want to split these legs. Uh, the wood, when I got, I, you could feel it, when I got to the top of that leg, uh, the, the wood was extremely hard. I had a hard time pushing to get down through it. Now I used my staple gun and I had to do some good measuring to make sure I hit those little spacers on the top and it worked out quite well. Everything was very secure. Looks level. Whoa, looks level. I added some spacers to the back because I needed to put two pieces in this back or one piece, however I could fit it back in there because these chairs went on an angle and the back was going to have to be tweaked a bit more to have everything come together and get around the rails of uh, the back legs. So I did make a cardboard template. So I knew exactly what I was gonna need to fall into place. I took that template and marked it on the other half of the board. And I went ahead and I cut out these two smaller pieces that needed to go into the back. Well, let's see if it fits. Get it down there in place. It's snug. Probably have to sand it just a bit, but it looks pretty darn good. Now that I have both of them on, I tapered the back and I had a problem with a knot in the wood. Nobody told me that knots are extremely hard to cut and when you do try to chip them, the whole knot just wants to chip out. So I went ahead and secured those back pieces with my staple gun again. Time to see if we're level. Is the front level? Yeah, yeah. How about the back? Yeah. I'm pleased with myself. I am not a carpenter at all, as you can tell. I took my surf prep with uh, 80 grit sandpaper and I needed to get this wood smoothed down, especially on the corners so it didn't feel sharp in any way. And you can see I actually did round them corners in the front. I was trying to make up my mind if I should do a straight diagonal or just try to round it and then uh, sand it with the surf prep to give it a nice roundness. And that was what I ended up doing.
The whole thing <clears throat> needed to be scuff sanded. It was just layer, a layer, a layer of paint and very glossy. 80 grit I used on it. Then, of course, followed up on the natural wood, any cracks or really deep holes or gouges um, I fixed. And when it was dry, I went ahead and primed just the new wood with some bin sealer. Put the first coat of paint on, which was Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint in barn red. I painted the whole bench. Now time to get messy. Spray your piece with water, get it moist, and then you're gonna take some salt sea spray or whatever, whatever additive that you use, and you are gonna start to sprinkle that on your piece, throw big uh, lumps of it at your piece, however you want it to look, because this is gonna be a resist. So that the next layer of paint does not cover that spot, and when you chip it off, you're gonna see that red. Pat it down. Then spray again until it becomes pretty wet. And when you get the whole thing done, give it another good spray of water. Make sure everything's wet down good, not to the point of sliding off, just wet so it sticks to the piece. And then you are going to let it dry for 24 hours. And here we are. We're going to put the next coat of chalk mineral paint, antebellum blue, right over the top. You might want to put your paint in another container because you're going to contaminate it with uh, that dust. I just used a small jar of it, so I figured I probably would use the whole jar, so I didn't do that. Once it's dry, Get your scraper out and start to scrape all the dust and the chunks off the top of your piece. And you are going to let that red show from underneath. Some of, a, some of it will be dusty white. And I actually got some of the yellow color and a little bit of the wood when I hit it too hard, but that's okay. I dusted the whole piece off with just a lightly dampish rag to get all of the dust off because we're gonna start to create some really cool things on this piece, starting with a mud cloth design stencil and some Krylon Brilliant Metallic Paint in Gold because I am waiting for my Dixie Shine to show up and it isn't here yet. So I am gonna start by rolling this on and it was about 120 degrees. And the first coat that I put on, I lifted up the stencil and it just was not dark enough for me. I just really have a hard time finding a nice gold, gold paint. So, number two. So when I took it off, it was sticking so hot and it ripped chunks off. But that's all right because it's a happy mistake. It just adds to the design and the old oldness and the pattern. That's what I like about this type of furniture. You really can't screw it up. I did tape it off and my plan was Dixie shine in these areas here. Stick with me is the glue for the Dixie Shine. I have painted in these areas and the shine comes in a box and it comes in a roll. And then you cut off the amount that you want to use. And you put that over the top. You, you need to let that glue dry for five to 15 minutes. And shiny side up, I took a kind of stiff plastic brush and went ahead and rubbed all the way around pretty firmly. And this does not scratch the outside of this at all. It, it maintains its finish.
There you go. Wow, that looks pretty good. You can see where it pulled off the paper and you don't have all them tiny little flicks all over with gold leaf. I'm ready to take all the tape off. Um, I've completed putting on the Dixie Shine on my stripes on all the legs. Overall, I love the gold. Looks great. Very shiny. I decided to uh, paint that front seat rail there and just use some leftover pieces that I had and put some nice gold color going all along the edge of the seat, all the way around and across the back. I wanted to bring some of that detail to the back rungs on the chair. So I took a stencil and I painted some of the stick and stay through the stencil, waited the amount of time and then put the foil over and rubbed it with the brush as well. And there you have it. I really like it. I wanted to put some Dixie dirt on and it just was not working. It wasn't staying on. But my areas where I put the gold was still tacky. And I thought, all right, I am going to put this Dixie dirt on all this gold foiled area so I can take that tack away and it worked really nice because I really wanted to spray this. I did use polycrylic in gloss because this had to be a shiny piece. Now I'm just going to let you see the rope because you know I always have to finish my pieces with some rope if it's bohemian. So you'll see it when it's finished. Oh, those ugly mismatched chairs. Wow turned out to be a real beauty. I really love it. I hope you like it too. I found out a bit about the chairs. The Colonial Salt Company was started in 1901 and in 1945 
General Mills bought the company and named it Diamond Crystal. In 1985, Philip Morris purchased the company and then I couldn't find anything about it online after that. But then when my husband asked about the salt bag and looked at it, he said, yes, this is now Cargill Company because it is a company that is an affiliation with the company that he works for, which is a big company called Cargill. So this company is now owned by Cargill and it does still operate. But I know the chairs uh, were antique, but guys, they were in such bad shape. There was no way to save them. This was the only way to save it. And I think I did a really good job. Make sure you guys check out the playlist, which is in my description and check out everybody that participated in this challenge. And I want to thank Corey from Desert DIY for putting it on. Hey, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Check that little bell so you know when I have the next video out. My next one will be September 23rd. And then after that, October 15th.